Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and today I want to talk about something that has been bothering me for a while. Wine scores are everywhere, and they're supposed to help consumers make more educated decisions. They're easy to understand, and they grab the consumer's attention on the shelf or on websites. I am pro scores, in combination with a meaningful tasting note, but they can also be misleading, like in the case of one of Italy's leading wine critics, Luca Maroni. Let's talk about it. The modern 100-point wine rating system was championed by Robert Parker, who introduced it in the 1980s. Parker saw himself as a consumer advocate who operated independently. You can say what you want about him, but I never heard anyone making credible accusations about Robert Parker being biased when reviewing wines, and his publication, The Wine Advocate, never accepted money from producers. His system is now used by most wine publications, and the wines are rated on a scale from 50 to 100 points. Wines that receive 95 or more more points generally represent the creme de la creme, the best of what this wine style has to offer. Obviously, there are differences in taste between different wine critics, and there are some that consistently score lower or higher. Second, sorry, there is a general consensus on what 90 or 100 points actually mean. However, there is one wine critic that has hijacked the 100 point scale and has created his own system, Luca Maroni. Luca Maroni is an Italian wine writer who has been working in wine for a long time and he created his own scoring system called the Logisma of the Fruit Grade of Wine. While most critics nowadays base their score on their overall perception of a wine's quality, Maroni uses the slightly weird formula of consistency, plus balance, plus integrity, which results in his index of pleasantness. Consistency describes the wine's weight on the palate. The balance is the balance between sweetness, acidity, and tannins, and so on and so forth. And the integrity is the wine's purity and fruitiness. In each category, a wine can score between 1 and 33 points. So a wine can get up to 99 points. And he doesn't want to give 100 points because he says that's reserved for perfect wines and they don't exist. Which is a bit of a silly argument because in this system the perfect wine actually is the wine with 99 points. I must admit that it took me a while to understand his system and I'm still not really sure whether I can score wines based on this method. What I am pretty sure about is that most consumers don't know anything about his scoring system and I also believe that his scores don't represent reality at all. I went through the last 1000 wines that he rated and 33% of them received a score higher than 95 points and only 28, 28 out of 1000 or less than 3% received a score below 90 points. And now you might think maybe he had some amazing wine tastings in the last few months. Nope, he tastes way more entry-level wines than most wine critics would. And some of his 99-point scoring wines are, well, okay wines that I wouldn't mind drinking every now and then, but certainly not the best of the best. His scores are available for free on his website, but I couldn't find any tasting notes in English. What I found was some additional information for the wines, like this 2022 Vecchiano Rosato and that received a score of 99 points and he recommends drinking this wine as an aperitif while eating out for a romantic dinner for a great event. It could be served at Christmas, Easter, New Year's Eve. It could be a morning wine, an afternoon wine or a wine bar. A wine for a wine bar maybe. I don't really know. He also suggests that you should drink this dry rosé wine with appetizers, meat, desserts, fish or main courses. So pretty much everything. What took the crown though was that he recommended agave was a great wine for teetotals even though this wine contains alcohol. So this is either the weirdest recommendation I've ever read or a sick burn against the winery or against teetotals. I'm not really sure. As a producer, you can buy a diploma with the score for your wine from Luca Maroni for 50 to 122 euros. The incentive is obviously quite a lot higher to buy this diploma if your wine receives 99 points as opposed to 70 points. Supermarkets or retailers obviously also prefer promoting a wine that received a 99 point score as opposed to an 81 point score from Robert Parker. And this is how this formerly fairly unknown wine critic became so influential. 
Consumers often don't necessarily understand the difference and they might think that this wine that received such a high score must be a great bargain, even if that's not the case. Some retailers also don't mind showing a Maroni score next to a Parker, Suckling or Venice score, giving off the impression that these scores just represent different opinions but were given on the same scale. I believe that Maroni scores have become a sales tool for producers and retailers rather than a way of communicating quality to the end consumer. And I don't know of any wine professionals who look at Maroni scores to find out whether a wine is good or bad. And after looking deeper into the information on his website, I certainly won't. I think this is misleading the consumer, you guys, and that's not just bad for you, but really for the reputation of wine scores or the wine business in general. I bought two wines that were scored 97 and 99 points by Luca Maroni. And while I would normally have to pay more than 100 US dollars for wines that were scored this high by a reputable publication, I paid less than 10 euros for the two bottles together. The score is proudly displayed on the label and I'm assuming that thousands if not hundreds of thousands of bottles of these two wines were in circulation as I bought these wines at Aldi. So let's find out whether these scores are justified, shall we? The first wine is the Fantini Rosé made from Merlot apparently and that's the well a super high scorer with 99 points. The good thing is it has one of those glass stoppers. You know how I like to reuse them. And I will certainly use this. So I bought this for 5 euros 99. So let's see whether I made an insane bargain. It's pretty pale in color, very, very light in color, which is not a bad thing at all when it comes to rosés. It smells very clean and pristine. There's flavor of strawberries and cherries so it's not bad but very simplistic so there's basically just fruit flavor here feels like it was fermented at a very cold temperature to bring out this estery kind of intense fruitiness on the palate it's kind of bland there's a little bit of bitterness there the acidity is actually fairly low and it's not necessarily refreshing it just kind of rolls over your tongue it's kind of soft easy drinking. So I'm going to rate this 79 points. I think it's an okay wine. It's average. It's well made. There are no flaws there, but but it just lacks everything that would bring it up to 99 points. There's actually quite a bitter aftertaste coming from that rosé. It's kind of burning in my mouth. Even though the alcohol was at 13.5, I mean, yeah, no. Definitely not great. Next up is the Galadino Montepulciano d'Abruzzo and that one received 97 points. So it's not quite as high scoring as the other one, but still pretty high. It is bottled under this very short plastic cork, which in my book isn't necessarily a great sign for quality. And to be honest, when a wine sells for three euros 49 in a discounter, that's definitely also not a good sign for quality. I always wonder how does this work? How do you make a wine for three euro 49, including taxes, bottle, label, capsule, cork, profit margin for the discounter, and obviously your 50 euro PDF certificate from Luca Maroni. So the wine is pretty light in color, which is not atypical for Montepulciano d'Abruzzo. It smells of like sour cherries and spices, a little bit of pepperiness and yeah, black tea flavors, but it feels a little bit unripe. On the palate, it's actually quite light. The tannins appear quite grippy and a little bit harsh, and the acidity is fairly elevated. So this is not very enjoyable, but it doesn't have any major flaws. I think it's still kind of average. So I'm going to rate this 72 points, not 97, 72 just to make myself clear. All right, this was a bit of a dive into this rabbit hole, but I find it important to share this kind of stuff with you so that you know what you are doing. And even though I don't think this is illegal, I still find it wrong. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. The question of the day is, what are your experiences with Luca Maroni scores? Are there any other critics where you kind of go, well, this is not quite right. Let me know down below in the comments. 
I uh, hope I see you guys again soon. I'm not going to drink this stuff, but I'll find something in my cellar. So whatever you guys do, stay thirsty. Thank you.